All right, guys, so um, I'm not going to wait around for my press. What I've gone ahead and done is take the old um, carrier bearing, uh, nipped the cage off. Here's all the rollers, okay, and I cleaned up the race. And I'm going to go ahead and use that as a driver to drive this race onto here. Uh, this is the post has been cleaned, the inside of this race has been cleaned. I've gone ahead and done the other side. It takes a good amount of pounding, but it does work. It works very, very well. You just need a piece of wood to stand off. Uh, you can hold it like so, or you can drive it vertically. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you put a good amount of force into it and you strike it nice and clean, make sure that you're not on the cage, that you're actually on the race. As long as you stay on the race, line everything up beautifully, give it a good whack, it'll start to seat. See, we're nearing the top of the post here, very close to being done. And when it finally makes the, the seat, when this fully seats, I'll know because this will start to hop. Um, so, I'm pretty high up above this thing. There we go, it's starting to hop. It's seated. And you can feel the crown. It's actually sticking out of the bearing race. So we're going to go ahead and give that one more good solid strike. Just to make sure. And you can see this doesn't want to move off because the post is actually sitting proud. That's a good solid hit. And it's hopping good. Alright. All we got to do now is go downstairs and red Loctite these bolts. I backed all the bolts off. As you can see, I um, took the brake clean, just standard brake cleaner, uh, hit all the holes, let it soak, turned it over, hit it with the compressed air, um, cleaned all the holes out, and then I cleaned all of the bolts off. And, uh, I've double checked the Ford spec. It does say 97 to 102 foot pounds. Just a good amount there. I'm going to go ahead and thread these down. Go ahead and start these with the impact. And uh, we've got the torque set. I'm going to double check that to 97. All right. Okay, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to leave this here, go up to the garage, get the case, get the um, uh, bearing races, and the shims, and the shim pack, and bring everything down here for final fitment, and uh, placing into the case, and doing our workup, and gear pattern testing, and we'll go over I've all done. I've gone ahead and got this bearing on here, and seated with the shim, the 30,000th shim. I went ahead and measured it. And uh, I'm going to take the crush washer off because it, it is getting in the way of us getting the proper preload set. So we want that shim to compress, okay? This needs to fully seat in the race. A light amount of lubricant, not a lot, just a very little amount of lubricant. This goes over, okay? This one will shimmy on and shimmy off. I ground it out as well. So I'm going to go ahead and place this in. Make sure we don't damage anything. We're passing it through and feeling. Make sure we're not hanging up our races okay putting this one in getting it started until we can put our flange on dust cover goes inward again there's no seal or no oil slinger this is just for test fitting we're gonna put our nut on and we're gonna start torquing our nut down until the flange has no wobble there should be no wobble here whatsoever okay Alright, that's too loose. As you can see, I can just spin it by hand. Okay. 
The preload is the amount of resistance that you want, and right now that's not enough. So we're just going to get those started. Now you want to run them through so you have a good amount of meat into the threads. You don't want to do this shallow, okay? You're going to take a long breaker bar, and you're going to run it across there and under there, and that'll stop this from rotating, right? So now when I go to put torque on this this way, I need to stop it from torquing by going like this way. And then just apply a little torque and feel for that that's too much, all right? I can tell right now that's that that might be there. There's no wiggle. There's a bit of resistance. Let's go ahead and test it. So again, everything is dealing with this 1 and 1 16th nut. So we're going to go ahead and Grab our beam torque wrench, place it on there, and beam this out. Now this is a quarter inch because this is inch pounds. So it goes quarter to three eighths and three eighths to half, and then half inch. So again, we're looking for eight to 14, and there's nothing, it's like two. There we go, we're right at 8 inch pounds. That's about perfect right there. Between 8 and 12, I believe, is the uh, standard reading that you want, and we're right at about 10, so that's perfect. That's the perfect amount of preload. So we're going to go ahead and go with a, a medium shim here, see if I can't squeeze it between these two. Is that going to let me slip it in? There it is. All right. We don't want too much backlash in our gears here. Take a reading and go from there, but I'm pretty sure my backlash needs to be right around 10 thousandths. And that to me looks excessive. Alright, let's do this at 63, 73, 63, 73. The gauge is not moving. Yep. We're just just shy of 10 thou. Now, that's not the most scientific or best way to do this, but I cannot find my fixture to save my life. Got... All right. Wow. With that torque applied, I'm probably going to take a shim out. That's almost too... All right, so you can see I took the packs that the kit came with. They're in. I've got my backlash back. As you can hear, so I'm going to go ahead and cap it and see if the backlash disappears again. Backlash still present and still minimal. I mean, that's probably five to eight. For every ten thousandths of shim, you're going to move it seven thousandths. The way things are meshing is you want to move those teeth out that will give you more backlash. The closer you jam them into one another, the less your backlash. So, but this spins beautifully. I mean, this is, this is almost dead nuts perfect. It's just a little too light on the backlash. I'm going to need a little bit more backlash and I'll be set. All right, those are at ninety. Backlash stayed, that's good. Look at that. 29 to 39. All right, I'm very curious. Since it's all torqued down and I think I've almost got the, the, the spec um, nailed, we're going to go ahead and measure with the, uh, the marking compound just to take a look. So, again, this is just a, a, a paste, all right? And it, it, the kit comes with it. You want to apply it liberally to the teeth. Okay. Get down in there. On both sides. The coast side and the drive side. Alright. Let's 
Let's go ahead and run this through. So the couple. Let's go back. All right, so. All right, guys. So the pattern is looking really good. Um, I just ran it through about five or six times, and as you can see, this is the coast side of the gear, and this is the drive side of the gear. So the more vertical plane is the drive side, and as you can see, the pattern on the back there is almost smack in the middle. It's not too far out on the heel. It's not too far in on the toe. It's just right. It's not too deep into the root of the gear. You can see it doesn't go all the way down in, and it doesn't sit all the way out either. It's got a nice contact patch right in the middle on the drive side. On the coast side, we are drifting a little bit toward the toe, but again, full contact is right around the center of the tooth. Drifting a little bit toward the toe, but again, there's no pattern out on the toe end. That is a good looking pattern. I'm going to go ahead and call this a day. Um, all I'm going to do now is final assembly. We're going to go ahead and take the cap bolts off, make note of which shim pack is on which side, set them aside, pull the pinion out, press the pinion bearing on, and then get everything ready to go with the crush washer um, on the inside of the pinion and get the new flange and bolt on there. And we're going to torque the hell out of it in order to crush that crush washer in order to get just the right preload on our pinion. Once we nail the preload on the pinion, we'll come put it back together with the right pack on each side, call it a day, button it up, put fluid in it, put it in the truck, and go for a drive.